Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like Hero, folks. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm back here with Tore of Ferdinand's Angle Squad, that's a CSA in southern Norway. And Tore has been on a journey transitioning from conventional to regenerative practices that you might remember from our YouTube channel. I filmed the 30 hectare farm on the YouTube channel back in September 2018, detailing the market garden CSA, pasture pigs and cattle, and the Ridgetail style egg mobile. And it's one of the greatest examples of diversified regenerative farming in Norway that I've heard of. And so I'm super excited for today's episode to see how things have been developing and systems have been solidifying there. The farm sells through self-harvest CSA as well as Rico rings. And I'm super excited to have uh, Tore join us today. So thanks so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us. Thank you to, uh, to listen to what we are doing. Yeah. I'm really excited. We've got lots to talk about. And obviously, you've got a lot of different enterprises going on at the farm. And I think people are going to be really excited to have a, a big update of, of how things are going there. But maybe we can start back for people that haven't uh, seen that video on YouTube. Could you maybe tell us a bit about your journey into farming and the sort of transition of mindset that you've been through on your journey? Yeah, that's... Um um we we, um, we 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 started like my my uh, parents was doing it was a typical farm with uh, potatoes and, and grain and uh, the animals was left and uh, the beehives was left and and it was quite a monoculture uh, system uh and um for uh, yeah, it's now soon 20 years since I, I told my father that I, I want to take over the farm, and um, he also tell uh, told me that um, uh, when you're starting up, you should uh, you should focus on more organic uh, farming, and yeah, uh, I figure out that um, um, uh, yeah after some years that uh, it was possible to do organic farming also. Uh, it was, it was uh, a time there that um, uh, all the farmers around were saying it, it, it's not possible to do organic farming around you. Um, and uh, um, you have to introduce animals to fix it. So yeah, I believed in that. <laughs> but uh, after a while, um, there was actually a um, uh, company in Norway who do um, free ranch organic pigs who contacted us and said, can you please start up with this? So um, we got uh, a contract of five, six hundred pigs per year to deliver. That was um, like um, uh, 12, uh, what do you say, M mother, mother pigs yes, sir, who has two rounds with with the piglets every year uh and yeah we just we just did it um that was a a big travel uh but it opened a lot of doors and you start to understand um the whole thing uh when you do this amount of pigs uh it's actually not the nicest part for your soil Mm. It's quite uh, it's quite hard, and uh, you know here in this part of Norway it can it can be forty minus in the winter, but it can also be zero winters. And when you when you go uh, uh, out with a big big tractor uh, in the soil, and it's just it's just shitty. Yeah. Uh, so we saw uh, quite early that it it's a kind of damage on the soil but yeah. we was pig farmers so it was ah, it's not that important that we have the best soil around but we still had the grain and we still have potatoes in the system and for every year we was doing this we saw it was uh it's, it's getting worse it was uh, you can mm -hmm. take the penetrometer and check it was like beton out there yeah um and uh, i can also s look onto my neighbor's fields and it's it's still happening uh, there too uh, with mm -hmm. big big machines and they have to go out in november to pick up uh, carrots it's it's hard for the soil uh, and um 
yeah, there was some, we understand it was some holes in the organic farming, uh, typical organic farming, who, who was quite um, um, hard to have a fix on. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, of course, we also saw that still organic uh, farming, we, we lost uh, our carbon in the soil out there. Uh, it was, our, sand, our soil is like sand, it's, it's light sand and it's like down to 1% of, uh, of mm -hmm. um, carbon matter in the soil. It's quite bad, it's very bad. And um, um, yeah, I, I, I get a lot of uh, what you call influence from other uh, farmers, of course, and some people come here to the farm. And on this point, there was uh, a young man who was just knocking on my door and he said, uh, um, I, want, I want to work here, I quit my job uh, and uh, I want to work here uh, and just learn to farming. Um that's yellow who also was in your your uh, yeah. film there. Um <laughs> He's and still there, I, right? I, I, yeah, but I felt he was a little bit crazy. Uh, he he <laughs> he pushed me far away and he was quite annoying <laughs> in some he know that I say that. Uh but it's um but uh, in that period we I started to understand much more about this and, and we took a trip to you also in the autumn there that's four years ago now and um, I remember you, you I was coming to you and I had uh, um, I just had the uh, ordered um, a t uh, not a tilling machine but uh, we call it freser, uh, like going around there to, to, uh, uh, to like, uh like uh for tilting the soil yeah yeah, vertically, yeah, yeah. like a power yeah, harrow yeah yeah. yeah yeah so you said please <laughs> uh, don't order that and take the money uh go and and visit uh singing from farm and and uh, learn more about this stuff and and uh, use the rest of your money on compost <laughs> <laughs> so we nearly did that <laughs> uh but it it takes it takes still some some time before I understand it really how everything works and how yeah. everything works together. That's the fine part to this. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, uh, yeah, we met uh, Elaine Ingham one time and Joe Salatan we met and we got a lot of good, good information. Uh, and there's so much uh, good studies in all this. So he was thinking, okay, we, we do all this change now. Uh, <laughs> so, so when I, who... was it when I came to see you, it was 2018. That, so that was like a real big push year for you guys to set up yeah, yeah. Yeah. a lot of diverse did, different things. Yeah, we did a yeah. lot, maybe yeah. too much. Uh, and it was it was uh, like the worst summer of like seventy years or something. With uh, it was dry and sun and thirty degrees every day. Yeah, and uh, not normal here at all. Uh, that was the great we, the great drought that's like is documented yeah. on our channel for the listeners from abroad. So it was a major drought year here in Scandinavia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was so hang on, let's crazy. just recap. Yeah. And so you you started a market garden of around a hectare. You started yeah. pastured eggmobile. You still had pigs. You got cattle out there, and you're having babies, and working just with yellow mainly, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty uh, full on. Yeah, it's it's um, yeah it's. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can recommend it for for everybody, <laughs> and maybe you should should take it a little bit step by step. Yeah. But right now it's it's just, uh, it's just yeah we have come to the fun part. So um, it's we, we 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 have the control now, uh, but it's it's a massive um, uh, change of our farm and how we. 
we manage everything, how we yeah. sell everything, how we thinking. Uh, so we let's can, can we go back a step then? So the because you still have some pigs, but you're not producing anywhere near that number that you used to, right? And yeah, so we 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 um, we we quitted uh, the the pig farming uh, and introduced it more in a. Uh, good uh, system here on the farm we have it to the max uh it's uh, pigs is easy to sell here uh, yeah. it's good economy in it uh so uh we had five six hundred we are over 100 now per year uh but uh the, f the fun part of that is that i think i have the same income for 100 pigs uh, compared to those five, six hundred. 